Sorry, I'm not a pastor, so forgive me. All right. Um, once again, my name is John Frankelangia. Um, and uh, let me pray one more time as we go over the word. Our Father who art in heaven, please allow those that have ears to hear your word, Lord. Bless, bless these words I'm about to say, and please let those that are here hear what, what your message is. We say these things in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. All right, so our reading is going to be Luke 4, 1 through 14. <clears throat> and then Jesus, being filled with the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being tempted for 40 days by the devil. And in those days, he ate nothing. And afterward, when they had, when they had ended, he was hungry. And the devil said unto him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become bread. But Jesus answered him, saying, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Then the devil, taking him high up on a mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said to him, All this authority I will give to you and their glory, for this has been delivered to me, and I give it to whomever I wish. Therefore, if you will worship me, all will be yours. And Jesus said to him, Get behind me, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. Then he brought him to Jerusalem, set him on a pinnacle of a temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge over you to keep you, and in their hands they shall bear you, lest you dash your foot upon a stone. And Jesus answered him and said, it has been said, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. Now when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from him until an opportune time. He began his ministry and returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee, and the news of him went through all the surrounding region. Okay, once again, uh, my name is John Frankelangia. Yes, that is how I spell my name. Um, Many of you know me, and I'm proud to call myself a Christian, and I'm proud to be a member of this church. And um, I was, uh, I'm originally from Massachusetts. I'm an Italian kid from Lowell, Massachusetts. Um, just had my 40th birthday, so quite amazing. Uh, growing up, I grew up in church. My parents were professional musicians. They were singers, so they got paid to sing at the church they were in. Now, many churches in New England, um, they're congregational Methodist churches. Um, I can honestly tell you, I, I, I was at church all the time. I was there before the lights came on and when they went off, you know, waiting for my parents to practice in the choir. You know, imagine giant organ with, with all the, the pipes and a, somewhat of an orchestra, you know. It was, it, was, it was quite magnificent. But I can honestly tell you that I don't remember reading much of the Bible. Um, I remember Easter and the Easter Bunny and Santa Claus and all, all, the, all the traditions that uh, these churches hold. Um, I'm going to fast forward it. So, after 9-11, I joined the Army, um, and uh, I joined the Army, and uh, I was in the Special Forces. I was a Green Beret in the Army. I've been a Green Beret in the Army for over 20 years. Um, let me explain a little bit of that to you. Uh, we have many principal tasks that we must do. Unconventional warfare, special reconnaissance, foreign internal defense, counterterrorism, hostage rescue, covert surveillance, psychological operations, civil affairs, information operations, and counter-proliferation of weapons of mass destruction. Uh, pri pr primarily, um, my main mission was to conduct activities that help, I, don't, I can't remember all this, so just bear with me, conduct activities that help a resistance movement or an insurgency to overthrow, disrupt, or coerce a government or occupying power by operating through or with an underground auxiliary or a guerrilla force in a denied area. I know that sounds crazy. Um, my specific job on a 12-man team 
was uh, was to I was a special forces engineer, so I was what we call the masters of the basics. I was a quiet professional. That's what they call us. I was a jack of all trades. Any engineering task that you can think of, I did. Uh, explosives, money, logistics, uh, you name it. I fixed vehicles, trucks, plumbing, carpentry, all that stuff. People would knock on my door all, all hours of the night. Um, to become a Green Beret, it takes a lot of dedication, extreme dedication. I mean, every waking moment is dedicated to doing that job. It, you have to be physically fit, intelligent. Um, you're, you're chosen to pick, to do that profession um, after volunteering. We also speak a second language. I speak a little bit of Arabic. Um, and currently, I'm, I'm the team sergeant, so I'm responsible for all the men on the team. It's not just this one team. I've been on multiple teams. Just had to summarize that. And now I'm going to tell you a small little war story. Uh, listen, you know, this used to be really hard for me to talk about, but, um, and it still is, but this is real. This is my life. I live it every day. And... Um, as you can see here, uh, one of my jobs was to ride an ATV of this type. Um, I would go around looking for IEDs, blowing them up, but also because I was out front, I would always usually get shot at first. Okay, I was always the, you know, the the first person to receive contact. Um, I've been deployed many times. Um, this one specific incident, I was on a patrol and our job was, we were going to this village and I was, um, I was uh, on my ATV and I was trying to overwatch my team go into the village to get some information. So I decided to uh, drive up this hill and uh, pull overwatch for them. Uh, I always had uh, uh, an automatic weapon on the ATV. I had my rifle. I'd have my grenade belt, and then I'd always have a grenade launcher to shoot smoke in the direction of the enemy as well as high explosives so that the aircraft could get on station quickly. And I remember looking over while I was on top of this hill, and I was looking down into this uh, stri compound and there was a man on a cell phone and of course I pulled my rifle out I'm looking at him through the scope I mean I'm see I don't miss let me just put it that way and I something told me he was surrounded by children and something told me not to do anything I just I didn't pull the trigger you know I just left it alone and then immediately I was engaged by the enemy from the tree line down in the down, you know a couple hundred meters from me and the bullets um, they went through my body armor and uh, shot my magazines in the front of my body armor as well as I had this dump pouch where I had my compass. And my compass was, I always had it on standby so that I could give a distance and direction to where the enemy was located. And I could see them. I'm literally looking at them. There's no cover up here like, like a dummy. And... Um, I had a pretty close call. I mean, I've had many close calls, but this one in particular was important to me now. I have the compass here. A bullet went right through that thing, right, right through the center of it, right there. You can kind of see it on there. I can show it to you later if you're interested, but it's just a reminder to me of how close... Is it, I keep this as a reminder to me of how close I came to death. And, and like I said, I've had many close encounters with death before. The bullet literally would have hit, just missed me right in my pouch. And, um, uh, you know, I look back at that now and I realize that specific event was the top point in which I lost my moral compass. I was willing to, and necessarily in this environment, do whatever it takes to win, to defeat the enemy to get out of there alive. And through the course of 10 years, that became 
my existence, training for war and going to war. Uh, use the clicker. I had, I'm not going to read this again. I had planned on going through here, but from our scripture, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone. When you, when you dedicate your something, yourself to something so uh, that takes over your life, you are essentially not serving the Lord. I mean, we cannot just live our lives with the things in this world. You need the breath of life. You, you, you have to consume it. And that involves reading it and studying it and every day. Every day. Tomorrow is not a guarantee. We need to ask God for forgiveness and we need to thank Him and study the Word of God. Um, the devil tempts us the same way he tempted Jesus. I, I, no matter what sin, whatever it is in your life, he tempts us the exact same way. He tests, he, in, when the Israelites were coming, coming out of Egypt, they, they were tested at their most dire need. The devil knows exactly what that is for each and one, every one of you. And that is, that is a personal experience with the Lord. I was also a free fall instructor. So, uh, I, I taught military skydiving in the army. Uh, honestly, it was the best job in the world. I mean, I got to stand on the edge of that ramp for many times. I have over 1,500 jumps. I'm a tandem master. I'm every qualification, or was, every qualification that the army has, or the military in general, that the United States, the world has. You know, I would stand on the edge of that ramp um, and just like the devil taking him up into a high mountain and showing all the kingdoms of the world at a moment of time, I felt like I was God. It was an amazing feeling. And the devil, as we know, he wants to be just like God. It's exactly how he tempts Jesus in the same manner. Um, if you worship the devil, he, that's a deception. If you worship him, he thinks you think that you have the power. Okay? I mean... As you can see, when a student jumps off, think about this. So when, this, when I jump off the ramp with a student, he's, he's trusting something, you know. He's either trusting himself or he's, pray, most of them pray to the Lord, I can tell you that. But I was like their safety net, you know, so I would pull their parachute for them. I was acting as their savior. I mean, I truly felt that way. I believed that in my heart. Um, Get behind me, Satan, for it is written, you should worship the God, your Lord, your God, and him only shall you serve. I, I was serving myself. I was, narciss I was a narcissist beyond narcissism. I was always told, you're the best, the best at what you do, we're the greatest, we go, we go to war, you know, we do things for in the name of what, you know. And you have to ask yourself that question. And, you know... I was oblivious to what I was doing. I uh, was oblivious to the way I was treating people, the way I acted. Um, and, you know, I felt powerful. Uh, it has been said, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. I cannot tell you how many times. Uh, I have this picture here of me jumping out of the aircraft with a, a thousand pound barrel. So you would jump out behind enemy lines. You know, I've never done that, but you train for it and you have your equipment in this barrel and then once you land on the ground you have you can jump people equipment all sorts of things and you would have the things that you would need to conduct your operations uh, you know I I tempted the Lord so many times I mean I jump off the aircraft and I'm putting my life in his hands you know thinking that I had the power to save my life or when I would go on operations um, you know, we're getting shot at. I mean, that's crazy. You know, I can't tell you how many times I walked up to an unexploded ordinance and just cut the wires and be like, well, I'm glad that thing didn't go off. Or it did, does go off before I get to it, you know. Um, I've been scathed, and that takes a toll on somebody. Uh, I mean, I, I was suffering. And all of us, all of you, have 
sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Just what we were talking about in Sabbath school. Um, the devil, the devil is smarter than than the world thinks, and they're truly being deceived. I see this all the time, and as the more you learn, the more you know, the more you see it, you know. And it's it's very disturbing. And I was weak, you know. I was weak. Um, I was deceived in what I was doing was thinking that it was good. Um, there, is, there is only one way in life, and, and that's through Jesus. Um, I, always, I do want to say one thing. I think it's interesting that the devil tempts Jesus, and he's able to bring him up to the temple, but not inside. I just always thought that was interesting. Um, you know, he has power, but he does not have the ultimate power. He is a false he has a false, deceptive power. Um, Matthew six twenty four. No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon, a money, abundance, the things of this world, Facebook, social media, politics, all of that nonsense. It's all fake. Um, I struggle with this still. I'm still active duty in the army. I'm still serving another master, um, you know. And I feel, I feel, I'm, I'm caught between that. Um, it was a choice. It's a choice to whom you serve. But I'm kind of stuck right now. Um, fast forward ten years after many of these photos were taken, I was self-medicating. I was dealing with post-traumatic stress disorder. You know, I was having nightmares, untreated injuries, um, traumatic brain injury. Uh, I was gaining weight because I was self-medicating. I couldn't exercise the way I wanted to because of my other injuries that I have. And I can assure you that I was in hell. God was absent from my life completely. And uh, <laughs> when I mean self-medicating, I was broke. I was spending all my money on drugs. It was terrible. I didn't treat people well. I was lost, truly lost. And, um, you know, I got in trouble. Uh, and uh, years of spiritualism and false healing, you know, I still had these problems. I'm like, why is this? When you go to AA or NA, Narcotics Anonymous, Alcoholics Anonymous, and you learn about uh, the higher power, they say, you need to find a higher power, you know, and they say, pray to this shoe, pray to this book. And there's even prayers in there, you know, I'm just being facetious, but there's even prayers in their books that you pray, to, you're essentially praying to God. It doesn't make any sense. So I was just searching for something. We're all searching for something. Something I learned about recently, which I, I love to talk about um, in the Bible, the word pharmakia is the Greek word for pharmacy. Um, it's often translated as sorcery or witchcraft. It refers to the use of potions, drugs, or enchantments, often associated with idolatry and practices contrary to God's teachings. It appears in Galatians 5.20 where it's listed among the works of the flesh, signifying its ne negative connotation and moral implications. We are all being deceived and, you know, alcohol, whether it's drugs, you know, any, any, whether it's your phone, you know, those are, these are forms of witchcraft and you need to be aware of it. Um, for when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regards to righteousness. What fruit did you have then in the things of which you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now having been set free of sin and having become slaves of God, you have your fruit to holiness and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Romans 6, 20 through 23. These are basic things. All right. My testimony, my story, what I'm saying to you is, is very basic. I know it's extreme in certain circumstances, but 
sin is transgression of the law. What law? The Ten Commandments of God. And there's only one result in that, and that's death, whether you die of old age or you just kill yourself morally or spiritually. Um, and there's only one answer. There's only one way to righteousness, and that's through Jesus Christ. Um, I got married to the love of my life, my wife, Vanessa. Now, it was Matt's and now Frank Langia, so she has to suffer with that. Um, every day before I open my eyes, I pray to the Lord and thank God that I'm alive. I pray that to forgive me of my sins and to get me through the day. And then most days I watch one, one to five sermons and how is that even possible? I ask myself, well, how do I enjoy that? Because I definitely um, despised that life before I was changed. Um, something was calling me to her, and it was the Holy Spirit. Um, I do have another story. When we were getting married, we chose to get married here in um, Rougemont. Rougemont County, is that? Durham, Durham County. Durham County. And... Um, we, through a friend of a friend, uh, we found a farm that, uh, you know, weddings are expensive, man. And they gave us a good deal. And we went there to look at the place. And it was a perfect day. It was like something out of a storybook. I mean, the grass was beautiful. The trees were beautiful. It was just amazing. It was the fall. It's, it's my favorite time of the year. Um, and uh, because you, it's a visible change through the seasons, and there's so many blessings, you know, through it, the smells, the, the cooling of the air, thank God that summer's over. And um, I remember looking in the grass about 15 meters from us, and there was something nestled in the grass. And I'm like, what is that over there? This is true, I'm not making this up. And I turned to my wife, I said, hey, there's something over there, and the other woman that was with her, the owner. So I walk over there, and there was a baby deer that had just been born. I mean, like, there was fluid on it. It was just born. Like, where did it come from? We were, standing, we were standing there the whole time. Where did that thing come from? Look, I'm not saying it was a miracle, but if you've ever seen a baby deer, you know, it looks like, you know, Bambi in Disney. Um, it, it's like a spotless lamb. And I believe, and, and as I went over to it, it got up, took its first steps, and ran off into the woods. And I believe that that was a miracle. I believe that was a, uh, uh, a sign of change in my life. And uh, it, was, it was amazing, I'll tell you what. And uh, it, I've seen a lot of things, but that was pretty extreme. Um, I met her family, and her father was like a diehard Seventh-day Adventist. Um, uh, I had no idea what that was. I'd never heard of that in my entire life. Not once. And I was like, I was thinking to myself, okay, uh, I went to church with them, and I'm expecting them to bring out snakes and start speaking in tongues and doing all sorts of weird stuff because I was like, why are we going to church on Saturday? Like, I got stuff to do, you know what I mean? Um, and, and I started to... I, and let me tell you, I thought y'all were weirdos, you know. But that day was potluck, and I was like, man, that's pretty good, <laughs> and I was hungry. So um, I, th I always thought, even though breaking my upbringing, it's so crazy, yeah, I always thought Christians were unintelligent and, um, and boring. But, I mean, I was, it, I was, it's funny because now that I have the truth and I see that, it's not us that are weirdos, guys. It's the rest of the world that is being deceived on what it means to be good. And um, I had guys that I worked with. Let me tell you, the environment that I work in, it's hard. I mean, I was telling, I tell my wife stories all the time and I think back on that. I don't even know how I'm standing to you bef before you today. I mean. <laughs> It's, it's a blessing, and uh, the things that, the way we treat people, the dece I was a master deceiver, guys. I wouldn't trust me if I were you, and I'm, I'm just kidding, but uh, I, I definitely wouldn't have trusted the old me. Um, 
uh, I went to church the first time at the Jacksonville SDA church, and I remember there was a Marine standing up there. He was an ex-Marine or whatever, and they, they were giving, uh, he was giving a sermon, and they had PowerPoints of, of apocalypse and all this fire, and I was like, what is this stuff? I never heard this in my entire life, you know? Um, Armageddon, I never heard that, you know? And I guarantee you I spent more church, more time at church than most people did. And... Um, he starts talking about the great controversy and a war. And I'm like, well, you know, I'm pretty good at war. I, I can do that, you know. Uh, and, like, I had no idea what I was, I, you know, I was just ready to get out of there that day. Um, oh, I also didn't have the clothing. I, I came to the house. I had shorts, you know, boots or something like that. And I said, I'm not dressed for church. And I remember something that her mother said to me. She said, she said, it's not a beauty contest. You know, I was like, oh, well, I was like, that's pretty good. And just like we were talking about, it doesn't matter what church you're in. It doesn't matter if you're a Catholic or a, a Protestant. It's your relation. Where is Shirley? Where yet? It's your relationship with Jesus and the Lord. That's it. It's as simple as that. But the world's being deceived. We all know that. They're not reading their Bibles. Oh, we went to a church in Boston. Uh, recently, and something they do, and this is something else. I heard the three angels' message that weekend as well. It was the first time I heard it, and also um, uh, the Sabbath school lesson that quarter was a three angels' message. And we went to a church in Boston recently, and one thing they did was every Sabbath they said the three angels' message from memory. So. We're not going to get up and do it from memory. It's right here. Um, yes, you guys can see that. So we're going to read it together. And then I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell upon the earth, to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to Him, for the hour of His judgment has come. And worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea, and springs of water. And another angel followed, saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she has made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornications. Then a third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast and his image, and receives his mark, on his forehead or on his hand, he himself shall also drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out full strength into the cup of his indignation. He shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb, and the smoke of their torment ascends forever and ever, and they have no rest day or night who worship the beast in his image, and whoever receives the mark of his name, here is the patience of the saints, here are those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. And that's in Revelation 6 through 12. Um, I believe that when I heard that, I was astonished. You know, God's calling me to come out of Babylon. And that's and why? Because Jesus is coming soon. I believe that wholeheartedly. <laughs> and we have to tell people it's not just for us it's for the world there's so many people out there look what's happening with all the wars you know that's terrible i saw a this isn't i wasn't going to talk about this but i saw a statement released by the pentagon a few weeks ago that russia has lost since they invaded ukraine ukraine i don't know if this is true or not but the pentagon said that 600, over 600,000 people have died in Russia in that war on the Russian side alone. 600,000. That's more than World War II. More than people than they lost in World War II combined. That's crazy. I mean, that's just horrible, you know? It, makes you, it really makes you question. When, you, when I heard that message, I was like, oh my gosh, I felt God's talking to me. Um, Sorry, it's hard to talk about because this is real, man. Um, all right. But I say to you, here, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you and pray for those who spitefully use you. 
To him who strikes you on the one cheek, offer the other also. And from him who takes away your cloak, do not withhold your tunic either. Give to everyone who asks of you, and from him who takes away your goods, do not ask for them back. Luke 6, 27 through 30. I was thinking about what you said this morning and that about that person that you met, and you gave them money. Many of us would say, oh, don't give them money. But it's the right thing to do. It really, truly is, and, you know, maybe there's other ways to do good, but you have to ask yourself this one question. Because if we believe in Jesus, which is truly, a, Jesus truly existed, he was truly crucified, I ask myself all the time, am I crazy? I ask myself that almost daily. Is what I believe real? I'm sure you all ask yourself that. Think about it. Are you ready to forgive those who persecute you and hate you? I think selfishness is one of the hardest things to get over. As a man, it is very difficult when my wife tells me that I'm wrong to say I'm wrong. It's as simple as that. I mean, but, and this problem is, is a worldwide problem. Um, I'm becoming, and I think I'm a slab behind. Sorry, guys. There's another picture. That's, you know, but I'm becoming changed. Many of you, I, I've already given this sermon at two other churches, at Five Oaks and Jacksonville SDA Church. I find it interesting. I met Pastor Will at camp meeting. Will Usizen, as I say his name. He's a great dude. He's like a local celebrity. Um, and uh, I met Pastor Will at camp meeting through this church, through many of you. We had attended many other churches uh, in the past few years. And I just find it strange that Evan, when I came into this church, I told, I met Brian. He was the first person here. And then I told Carl a few weeks later that I was never going to become a Seventh-day Adventist. I'm a Protestant. You know, it just sounds so stupid. Um, but, but I'm being changed. I mean, since I've been coming here, I got my master's degree. You all know that. I, I, I mean, uh, I, things I used to love, now I hate. I can't stand sin in my life. It's disgusting to me. I, I want it out of there. I'm tired. I think you said this too. I'm tired of looking over my shoulder. I'm tired of worrying about the bad things that are going to happen because of my actions. Now I don't have to worry about that anymore. You know, and it's just an amazing, that's an amazing feeling in itself. Um, I get in my truck, and what do I do? I listen to hymns. <laughs> I, I, I used to hate Christian music. I just thought it was lame. But just last night, I was watching something, and um, uh, I even said this to my wife. I said, I said, you know what band this is? Oh, that's Black Sabbath. And the name of the song is I'm Blind. And I, was, I thought of it, just those two thoughts right there, and I was like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe I used to enjoy that. You know, um, Ozzy Osbourne, you know. Anyway, uh, even my family's noticed a difference. They've said that uh, I've, I've lost weight because I've, one day I just said, you know what, I'm going to stop eating bacon. And let me tell you, that was difficult. But uh, I did, and I haven't looked back. I'm, I'm largely vegetarian. I still eat some meat, but I can, I can never kill again. I cannot do that, never again. Will I ever do that? Um, Things I love, I used to hate. Let your heart not be troubled. You believe in God, believe in me also. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to, pre go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know. And you know the way. John 14, 1-4. These are basic things. All of us, I mean, I'm just, I'm not like telling you you need to do this. I'm just saying that the gospel is like so simple. You know, follow Jesus. It's as simple as that. And um, Jesus keeps his promises. He's made promises before and he's kept them. So why wouldn't we believe his promise that he's coming soon? It just doesn't make sense to me. If you say you're a Christian and you're reading and you're not reading your Bible, then are you truly Christian? Are, are you truly following him? Are you taking up your cross and following him? Are you following and living by his commandments to include the fourth commandment? You know, uh, it'll make you think. And regardless of that thought, 
the Bible is good. It's a good thing to live good and live healthy. It just, it's a good thing. It feels good. It feels great not to have to look over your shoulder. Um, we have to keep our eyes fixated on Jesus. That's the only way, you know. Every day, this week even, the devil has been attacking me nonstop. I'm going to get to that. We're almost done here. Um, you know, I've got something that most people never find, and that's the everlasting gospel. And praise God, because it just, it's just a good thing. Um, he who is not with me is against me, and he who does not gather with me scatters abroad. Either make the tree good and its fruit good, or else make the tree bad and its fruit bad, for a tree is known by its fruit. Matthew 12, 30 and 33. Um, I, I was not living a good life. I was destroying myself, the holy temple. I was not treating others. I wasn't doing anything that God wanted me to do. I am proof that a life of sin, undevoted to God, results in death. I wanted to kill myself. I did attempt suicide through the use of pharmacy. And it was horrible. You know, I mean, thank God. I was hiding that from everybody. Everybody. My wife, everybody. And um, thank God that I just got on my knees on my most darkest day and prayed to God to take away my sin and heal me. And it worked. Amen. It works for anything. Anything that you do. Anything that you're going through, that process is the same. Um, I also got to mention this. Look, I love my country. America is the greatest nation in the world, period. And why is that? Because we have the freedom to worship, and we have laws and rules that govern the way we should live our lives, I believe, for good. But there is a deception that's going on, and i got to mention this. In Revelation 13, we read about that there is another beast coming up from the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb and spoke like a dragon. And he exercises all the authority of the first beast in his presence and causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast. We know who the first beast is. Whose deadly wound was healed. He performs great signs so that even makes fire come down from heaven on earth in the sight of men. I, I have this picture up here. I never talked about this before, but this is the A-10, the warthog. It's a it's a plane that's built around a gun. It literally has a Gatling gun and the rounds are like this big that shoot out of the front of that aircraft. It's the perfect weapon to destroy the enemy in close combat. Um, and it's pretty awesome. When that thing fires, you just hear this loud sound. It sounds like a burr and you feel it in your chest. It doesn't matter where you are. It's amazing. Every tenth round is a ex high explosive round. I'm not saying that's the fire that comes down from heaven, but you got to ask yourself, and I don't know who the second beast is. I don't want to say that, but you got to ask yourself if what we believe is true, if you believe in Jesus, why, like I said, you need to ask yourself, and whom you serve matters. Um, that's all I'm going to say about that. Don't be deceived. Um, we can bless others by doing good in our lives. Telling our testimonies. Um, you know, I feel that God is telling, he's talk, I talk to God every day. Um, uh, and um, I, was, I teach Bible study every Wednesday now. I think it's a blessing. You know, it's, it's challenging because I got a lot going on in my life. But um, I recently taught about the sanctuary. And I told her mother, I was like, oh, yeah, I'm teaching Bible study. And she's like, what did you teach about the sanctuary? She says, the sanctuary? You know, and I, um, I just thought that was funny because there are four things we can do. And it has to do with the sanctuary. The bread of life, we got to study it. We need to consume it daily. Prayer, you must do that. And we need to keep our eyes fixated on the light of Jesus. And the last thing is tell others what Jesus has done for you. That's all you can do. Just like my neighbor, as I mentioned last night. I wanted to just hug that guy because we were 
you know, he was just suffering. He was having a hard time. I think I woke him up out of some drunken stupor, and I was just, I felt bad. I wanted to feed him and just help him, but he wasn't trying to hear that. He just wanted to talk about himself. So I, we went inside, and that was it, you know. And it's just sad for me to see that, because I know exactly where he's coming from. Um, the seed of the word is God. Those by the wayside are the ones who hear. Then the devil comes and takes away the world, word of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. But the ones on the rock are those who, when they hear, receive the word with joy, and these have no root, who believes for a while, and in time temptation falls away. Now the ones that fall among the thorns are those who, when they have heard, they go out and are choked with the cares, riches, and pleasures of life, and bring no fruit to maturity. But the ones that fell on the good ground are those who, having heard the word with a noble and good heart, keep it and bear fruit with patience. Luke 8, 11 through 12. There's one thing that my father did teach me, and that I remember this. He, he's kind of like an agnostic and atheist. It's the strangest thing because he's saying so much... Uh, music that was devoted to the Lord, but he doesn't believe. I'm telling you, I, I wrap my head around this all the time, and I try to tell him, but I do remember, and he sat me down, and you reap what you sow. My sin is self-imposed. You, you know, if, if, if you're not living a life that's devoted to God in what you do, I'm not saying that you can't serve the military and love the Lord because there's many jobs in the military but my job specifically which is what something I worshipped I loved more than anything in the world um, I, I put that before anything else and it destroyed my life um, I don't want to talk about so much of the details of that, but I also believe that the good ground in this passage is the remnant church. We all want a soft landing, right, when we sin. But the only way to do that is to let Jesus take control of our lives completely. I've given everything to the Lord. I can tell you right now, I do have some bad news. I've been ser I served in the military over 20 years, way beyond far, and that's exceeded my expectations and more than most. And uh, I've, my, the entire time I've trained to go to war and serve this nation, I spent five years of my life deployed to war. Five years, and the rest of the time training for it. Um, because of my misconduct, misconduct I've been waiting over two and a half years for a decision for the, from the Army, and they may take my pension from, us, from me. And um, I can tell you right now, that out two and a half years of sitting in our camper, because we sold everything, because the Army did tell me originally that I could retire in lieu of separation. Long story short, we sold everything we had, because we realized that was a bunch of nonsense. We just things in our life. And now we, I, I, you know, I know that's extreme. But I believe that God was doing this to humble me. And uh, as well as I would have never come to the church if I didn't give up all that stuff. And like, I, it's a miracle. Um, there's a war going on between good versus evil. It's time to take off the armor of the world. It's time for me to take that armor off. I don't want to wear it anymore because it's heavy. And it's just a bunch of junk that is not good. Um, and put on the armor of God. And when you have that armor, it's lightweight, it's invisible, it doesn't cost you anything, it's free. And it allows you at some point to, <laughs> we were doing this in Bible study, let's see if I can get this right, because this is a whim. Um, the, it allows you f to, for the incorrupted to become incorruptible, and the... Um, the mortal to have immortality. I think I got that right, right? Yeah. So um, it's, it's an amazing thing. And again, you have to ask yourself, you have to ask yourself uh, many things. Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, I spent, let me tell you something. As a Green Beret, we're highly trained to live off the land 
and um, they call us also snake eaters, although I can tell you that was disgusting. Um, but uh, uh, when Jesus goes to the wilderness, he gains power, right? He gains power from the Lord. Why? Because he's praying. He's not distracted by anything of the world. It, I love the wilderness. I, I ask myself sometimes, I don't really want to go into the city when the city comes. I want to be out there. You know, I want to be out in the wilderness. I'm sure heaven's got all that. So I spent two weeks in the Adirondacks with my father, who I hadn't spent a lot of time with recently. We were out in the wilderness. Um, Adirondack State Park is the largest na or na national park. Adirondack National Park in New York is the largest national park. Um, they have like eight wilderness areas. And in each wilderness area, there's eight lakes. We were at one of these lakes. You know, you have to carry your stuff in, you got a canoe across the lake, then you got to carry your stuff to another lake, and then you get to the campsites, you know, so on and so forth. Um, it was perfect. And I hadn't spent a lot of time with my father, who wrote me a letter uh, recently, and I, one thing in the letter that it said was, who has my son become? And that really touched my heart, because <clears throat> we had perfect weather, and I prayed about this time with my father. And I'm not talking about just my father. I'm talking about the God, my father. Because I know he's blessing me because I'm becoming changed. And every time someone's up here talking about whatever it is they're talking about, God's talking to me. That's how I know it's real. Because, I mean, just yesterday I heard a sermon that's almost exactly like the sermon I'm giving today. And I said, how is that even possible? This is a miracle because it's true. Because God call, is calling to each, and one of, each one of us. Like I said, I believe that God's talking to me. Not that I'm a prophet or anything like that, but I believe that the, it, I take this seriously. I don't do anything less than 110% in my life. Never have and never will. Um, and if I'm going to commit to something, if we're going to call ourselves Christians, then we should read our Bible. And once you read your Bible, you realize, you're like, that doesn't sound right because the rest of the world's not doing that because they're not reading their Bibles. They're not understanding the important truth that the Bible has. Um, God asks us, like I said, we're all soldiers. We're all Soldiers in a war between good and evil. God asks Adam in the Garden of Eden, he asks him, he asks him, he says, where are you? I think that's the most amazing thing in the whole world. How do you, just think about that. Where are you? Where are you? Why are you here right now? What is your mission? Is that what God wants you to do? And you have to ask yourself that when you really truly become changed and you love Jesus more than anything, you, you ask yourself those questions. Um, this is a picture also from the Adirondacks. I just, we had, I can't tell you, the leaves were changing, the weather was perfect, we caught a bunch of fish, I spent time with my father, it was just so lovely, it was great. You know, and of course I told him about Jesus every day. So he has to calm me down a little bit, you know, but I'm still going to continue to tell him because I don't, I don't, it doesn't matter what he thinks. There's only one person that matters, and that's God and Jesus. Um, th I want to thank many of you who have helped me through my journey as well. Um, God's calling me to do something. I don't know what it is quite yet, but he's going to reveal himself in the time that is right um, and uh, thank you for many of you that have helped me get through this. Uh, I will get through it. I don't hate the army. I love them. You know, um, it's 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 a hard thing to humble yourself before selfishness. And uh, thank you guys for doing the Bible studies and taking me in to the church because I'm not special. I'm just a child of God, just like everybody else. Doesn't makes. Even though I got this suit on sale, which is really nice, um, it, it, it doesn't matter what you're wearing, it doesn't matter how you look, it doesn't matter the color of your skin, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where you come from, because God loves us all. Um, let's pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, thank you for giving me strength 
and the power of your word because we know that your son has the power. He has healing powers and the pr he makes promises. We know that your son is coming soon. We love you, Lord. Please guide everybody who has heard my voice today. Lead them in your ways, Lord. And bless us on this beautiful Sabbath day because we need rest. We're tired. We're hungry for your word. Bless, bless all who are here. And we say these things in your name, your son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen.